Hello, friends. So I'll be talking on this concept of mechanical power. So I'm sure most of you would have been hearing about this mechanical power as a relatively newer concept. And I'm sure you may have heard in few of the conferences. So I still feel there is a lot of uh, non-clarity in understanding this concept of mechanical power. So I'll try to simplify and try to look at it from a practical standpoint as to how relevant is this in uh, dealing with the RDS patients who are on mechanical ventilator. So I wish to acknowledge my colleague, uh, Dr. Pradeep, who also helped me develop this content. So I would use this symbol uh, throughout the presentation so as a symbol of mechanical power. So the topics that I would cover is just a bit of background as to why we believe this mechanical power is become important and we need to have some clarity on this. So just take you very briefly through the timelines of various concepts that have evolved in the ARDS, uh, be it low tidal volume, be it plateau pressure, be it driving pressure, so on and so forth, and why this concept of mechanical power. And then the question that we need to ask is, the P plat, which we were so much uh, adhering to as a quality benchmark, less than 30 or less than 28 in ARDS, has this been good enough in managing ARDS? I'm sure all the listeners know that uh, we, we derived at P plat, and after this, the thing that got emerged from P plat was the driving pressure. So now we are talking about mechanical power. So is there a need for this mechanical power? And when we talk about mechanical power, what is the number that we need to have in mind? What number of mechanical power is something that we all can be comfortable with and very briefly on the what is the current evidence so because most important uh, I've, I've heard talks on mechanical power where we have conceptually tried to understand various nuances as to how we derive the mechanical power but it is important to see whether this is relevant from the practical standpoint and whether there has been clinical application of this and then we look into most important is to understand, are there any new strategies to optimize mechanical? I think this is also very important because all of us understand conceptually mechanical power, but what are the strategies that we have to optimize mechanical power? And to that effect, as an extension, I would talk a bit on adaptive support and I'll tell you why we have to talk on that. And is ECMO a solution if we fail with all our maneuvers in trying to minimize our mechanical power and summary? So these are the topics that I will take you through. So we have clearly understood that in patients with ARDS, most harm is caused by ventilator-induced lung injury. As you see, this alveoli is over-distended and there is lung injury that happens. And we have clearly understood over many years that it is the tidal volume, low tidal volume, P-plat less than 28, driving pressure less than 50 are found to be protective and help in mitigating the ventilator-induced lung injury. And it is shown if these are not well-maintained, there is significant mortality correlation if you are not looking at these variables from the close quarters. So when we talk about mechanical power, in addition to these three elements of low tidal volume, plateau pressure and driving pressure, we are looking at other aspects. We are looking at the overall pressure, overall volume of the respiratory system, the flow dynamics, and most importantly, for all the listeners, you can bear in mind the respiratory rate, which was not added in any of the previous sort of a variables that would have an influence has given due emphasis in mechanical. So they take this respiratory rate, they take flow. So they pretty much take all the elements that mechanical ventilator deals with, along with low tidal volume, P-plat and driving pressure and see whether this has an ability to mitigate or reduce the ventilator-induced lung injury. And we know there are a lot of lung injuries that happen in ERDS. So Billy is, we have understood, then we know there is atelectrotrauma. Then there is barotrauma that happens due to high pressures. Then there is something called biotrauma, which happens due to a lot of inflammatory process that happens in the lung due to the leakage of alveolar exudates, inflammation, and so on and so forth. And then the recently, you might be hearing, there is a whole thing about PCD. So these are the different types of injuries that lungs would be threatened with in ARDS when they are mechanically ventilated. So this, I'm sure you're all aware, and we need to be aware of these sort of injuries. So let us look into the timelines on the evolution of protective strategies in ARDS. So in 1974, the whole concept of high inspiratory pressure 
came in and then there was a concept that P plat should be maintained less than 30 centimeter of water. In 1985, the whole debate was initially our whole thought was barotrauma causes more harm to the lungs. In 1985, the concept of volute trauma came. That is where the emphasis shifted from barotrauma to more of volume causing injury and we have discussed on this. In 1986, the concept of baby lung concept came and P publication as a concept came in around 1986. In 1988, uh, there was a new nomenclature that was introduced called atelectotrauma due to the uh, repetitive closure and opening up of the alveoli in atelectosis leading to trauma. Then 1990 came the concept of permissive hypercapnia as an acceptable strategy in ARDS. But there was no clear sort of an indication as to how much CO2 is safe. I think that is where we are coming down to the too much CO2 also may not be good. So initially we accepted if CO2 is high, as long as pH is okay, we are still okay. But so that those concepts are slowly changing. 1992, there was we came out with the concept of open lung ventilation where we incorporated low tidal volume with a high peak uh, to, rec to have an adequate recruitability of the lung and uh, ventilation of the lung. 1997, the concept of biotrauma came where the inherent damage to the lung due to the whole inflammatory process, exudates and the inflammatory mediators causing disruption of the alveolar architecture is called as biotrauma. And at around 1997 to 2000, the whole concept and understanding of maintaining tidal volume less than 8 ml per kg of rated body weight and the PEEP table came from the ArtsNet group and all these were adopted as tools to manage ARDS in a safe way. So these were some of the timelines. 2008, so until 2000 to 2008, things remained pretty much uh, adhering to low tidal volume, peep table, optimizing peep, open lump. Then the whole concept of transpulmonary pressure came. People started introducing the esophageal probes to measure the pleural pressures because transpulmonary pressure is the difference between airway pressure minus pleural pressure and esophageal pressure was taken as a surrogate of Plural pressure. So, and esophageal pressure was, so this was used as a means to titrate the PEEP. So, transpulmonary pressure as a concept came in 2008. And 2013, there was a talk on stress and strain index. And 2015, so, so this is very important step. So, from 2000, where we knew low tidal volume, we knew PEEP P plat, we knew PEEP optimization. But then the new terminology came in 2015, which was the driving pressure which is, I'm sure all the listeners here know that we now focus more on driving pressure because it takes P-plat and P-p optimization together and looks at uh, maintaining the driving pressure less than 50 as an important correlative effect on the outcomes and mortality. So the driving pressures and P optimization based on the driving pressure as a concept emerged in 2015. So mechanical power is an extension of our driving pressure, it takes more variables. So basically what you are seeing is, we have clearly understood there is not one variable which influences the outcome in ADS. Initially we thought low tidal volume, then we added P, then we added uh, plateau pressure. So now we have added driving pressure. So now we are adding more variables. So basically all the variables that ventilator offers to the patient are taken into consideration and come out with this dry, uh, mechanical power. So in a simplistic way, you all can bear in mind that it involves all these components in addition to respiratory rate, which was not factored in in most of these other previous dimensions. So if you remember that, I think conceptually, you will know it's just an extension of all these newer modalities. 2018, we came with a closed loop ventilation where ventilator itself auto adjusts pressure, volume, flow rate to the patient's needs. So this is a new concept that evolved in 2000 and all the newer ventilators which all my listeners would be uh, having in their units, they would have a closed loop ventilation. So like you have adaptive support ventilation, you have proportional assist ventilation. So you have pressure guaranteed volume control ventilation, so on and so forth. So there's a separate video on that. You can go watch it. And 2019, already this is in market. So I think I, I've, I've been making this statement in the days to come. We don't need possibly to have ventilatory workshops because everything is AI generated. So ventilators will auto sense the need for the patient and it will titrate the flow rates, volume, pressures and auto adjust. So this is already in the market. So Neo Ganesh, uh, which um, <coughs> draggers have, 
and uh, so so there are these algorithms which are incorporated in the newer ventilators so the ai modeled ventilators are already in the market so neo ganesh is one of them there is a better care software which is uh, incorporated in uh, the new age ventilator which is a ai generated so 2019 we are moving towards ai uh, sort of a influenced uh, ventilators 2022 currently the norms that we adhere to as a safe ventilation is tidal volume less, less than or 4 to 8 ml per predicted body weight p plat less than 28 and peep there is no ideal peep peep has to be individualized based on the driving pressure that is the norm we have agreed upon and the driving pressure less than 13 cm is what so we are going less and less so these are the norms that we subscribe to even at this point of time so this is the timeline as to how the ventilator concepts have evolved over last 20 to 30 years so just looking at all this awful injuries 1973 as i initially elucidated to the barotrauma was given more emphasis saying the pressures are more harmful then 1986 the move was that it is volume which is causing more problems so volume trauma was emphasized in 1986 1997 atelecto trauma got emphasized 2016 we are talking about ergo trauma so why mechanical power because this is a new nomenclature which got introduced in 2016 saying ergo trauma and this ergo trauma is influenced by various forces and that's where the importance of understanding the mechanical power came into concept so what is there so when you talk about mechanical power so if you have to simplistically look at the variables that influence as you see there is respiratory rate there is tidal volume there is resistance there is flow there is compliance volume and p so these are the factors that influence the mechanical power of the lung and each of these factor is attributed to certain types of injury so respiratory rate causes injury to the lungs which is called chrono injury so that is due to the energy transfer that happens to the lung and tidal volume you all know it is really volume trauma then there is resistance and flow it causes something called rio trauma and energy trauma is due to the volume divided by compliance and peep is at electro trauma so the the combination the cumulative effect of all this trauma is called ergo trauma because each and every variable so simplistically to understand each and every variable we set on the ventilator has an influence on causing injury to the lung the soul is that's why we need to understand all this leads to cumulatively which we call as mechanical power so then the question comes p plat of 30 is this enough so we have understood the transpulmonary pressure which is a airway pressure minus pleural pressure may not be the only indicator that can determine how safe are we ventilating the patients so mechanical power is the energy that a ventilator transfers to the patient who is ventilated causing injury to the lung so all the settings you do respiratory rate flow volume peep driving pressure peep plat all this when we set all this there is a transfer of energy to the patients who's on a ventilator which is calculated as joules per minute and that is what we call as mechanical power so for all my brilliant listeners if you want to uh, remember this is a simplistic formula power which is joules per minute so, so if you don't remember that the formulas which these are further split into three categories because when we talk about mechanical power so there is elastic component and there is resistive component for me it is easier to remember this formula in elastic component there is a static and dynamic so the static power or elastic component is 0.098 into tidal volume into respiratory rate into peep easy to remember so you just have to remember these three things 0.098 into tidal volume into and the last one you keep changing for dynamic it is same thing 0.098 into tidal volume into respiratory rate into half of driving pressure and for resistive because resistance of the airways is dependent on the peak pressure so it is just 0.098 into tidal volume into respiratory rate into peak peak pressures minus plat so very easy to remember so i'm sure for all the listeners this is the easiest way of remembering three sub variants of mechanical power which is a static elastic power component dynamic elastic component of the power and resistive component to the power so this is the simplistic way we can remember and even there are studies to see 
which has the greatest influence on the mechanical power and the greatest influence on mechanical power is the dynamic elastic component which has a greatest influence on the mechanical power and i'll show you some of the studies so now the question remains after using this formula so this is the total formula for the mechanical power so you will get it as joules per minute and what number of mechanical power the studies have shown 17 joules per minute or less is considered safe for the lungs anything more than 17 joules per minute is shown to be harmful so as i said mechanical cover if it is more than 17 joules per minute using those formulas it is shown to have correlation with increasing in the mortality so why where did this number come from so there are studies done so this study was by dutch group it's called pro network investigators so basically all these studies which i'll talk about mechanical power they took all the ards patients from all the major trials like accuracy trial artsnet trial so all the database patients they took and they did a computational modeling with various pressures and saw which sort of a pressure had a major effect on the mechanical power so the sarpa neto at all which is a pro network investigators which was published in intensive care medicine took two observational studies of mechanical power and they showed mechanical power had a good correlation with ICU and hospital mortality, ICU and hospital length of stay and ventilatory free days, even when low tidal volumes were maintained. So which means to say, uh, emphasizing that just saying I'll maintain my patients on low tidal volume, optimal PEEP, driving pressure less than 50 at this point of time may not be good enough. One needs to look at an additional component called mechanical power, which factors in respiratory rate also along with other things you saw in the formula. So Cressoni et al. from Italy, at low tidal volume, so they looked at uh, and with a high respiratory rate where there was a mechanical power of more than 12 joules per minute in peaks caused uh, really ventilatory induced lung injury, even at low tidal volume. And they, they showed in this particular study when there is a shortened inspiratory time where IE ratio is maintained by short, if you shorten inspiratory time, there is increase in the inspiratory flow that you have to do that increases the airway pressure and that increases the mechanical power. So basically you don't have to memorize all this. What it says is tweaking of one variable has a bearing on other variables and it increases the mechanical power. Like here you are seeing respiratory rate increase the risk of mechanical power. And here by shortening the inspiratory time, we know you have to increase the inspiratory flow, airway pressure goes up and mechanical power increases. This was shown in animal models as a precedent. So what about human studies? So this was a study that came from the French group uh, in intensive care medicine, Gurin et al. They looked at 787 patients with ARDS and these patients were not recruited. These were the database patients taken from accuracy trial and Proceva trial. And they showed that mechanical power had a good correlation with survival. With every one unit increase in the mechanical power, there was an increase of hazard ratio of 1.03 on the survival, which means one unit increase in mechanical power has a bearing on increasing in the mortality. This was shown in this particular study. This is a big study which I did mention, uh, which came from the Pru Network Investigation, Sarpa Neto et al. 2018. This is the largest study, 8,207 patients from the big database called the MIMIC database and the EIQ database where they showed these patients were on low tidal volume and low driving pressure. They had low driving pressure, they had low tidal volume, but what they showed is if mechanical power was high, even in these patients where, so now you cannot take comfort saying I'm maintaining low tidal volume, low driving pressure, but if mechanical power is high, it had increased in the mortality and that was statistically significant. Odds ratio was 1.7 and if you see the confidence interval, it was significant. So these studies are re-emphasizing that we need to pay attention to this concept called mechanical power. So gone are the days where we can say, okay, P-plat is less than 28 and your driving pressure is less than 15 and I'm optimized P, so patient will do well. So we have to look at this component of mechanical power was what came out of these studies. And Zhang et al., they looked at 5,159 patients from eight randomized control trials. Here, he gave emphasis on looking at mechanical power per body weight. So I said mechanical power of 17 joules per minute or less should be there. In Zhang et al., they looked at per kg. Per kg, you can keep a figure of 0.32 joules per minute per kg. So that is the sort of figure they are added, 0.32 joules per kg. 
So they said predicted body weight based uh, mechanical power versus absolute was found to be superior and they found it significant. These are all computational models. Don't get too much mind into how they did studies. They only took the data. They did the mathematical modeling, like which variable had a major impact on the further solidity. So don't complicate things. So this is the most recent study. Again, it is a computational modeling they did on the large database. So this came in 2021. This is the latest study which came from the Brazilian group. As you see the title, Ventilatory Variables and Mechanical Power in Patients with ERDS. Here they took 4,549 patients, again from the database. Here the average mechanical power per kg. This is like Zhang et al. said, look at mechanical power per kg. So for all the listeners, keep 17 joules as an indicator. If it is per body per kg predicted body weight, it's 0.32 plus or minus 0.14 joules per minute was the average mechanical power. And the driving pressure in this database was 15 plus or minus 5.8. And respiratory rate was 25.7 plus or minus 7.4 beats per minute. And what they showed in this study was the driving pressure had, so these were the predictors of mortality and the driving pressure's effect was four times that of respiratory rate. So this is a very important message that came. We tell that driving pressure has much more profound effect than the respiratory rate. So the effect is four times impactful is uh, to that of respiratory rate, which means the driving pressure is four times more effective than the respiratory rate. So although we are paying attention to the respiratory rate in mechanical power, still the driving pressure has more value because its impact was more on and its impact on influencing the outcomes was more with driving pressure. It was four times better than respiratory rate. But having said that, respiratory rate also has a bearing on mechanical power. And if you look at the forest plot, this is a very important. If you see the driving pressure, the odds ratio was 1.31, statistically significant. But if you look at power, the odds ratio was 1 point. So what it is telling you, driving pressure is still a very good marker because the odds ratio is better than the mechanical power. And here I, I told you in mechanical power, there is an elastic component of the mechanical power. And here, as you see, they have looked at elastic dynamic and elastic static. And elastic dynamic had a maximum impact on the mortality, which was 1.31. And as you say, then they came out with this formula four times. This formula came from the findings of the study that delta P or the driving pressure at four times the effect of respiratory rate. So they combined both. So they took four times the driving pressure plus respiratory rate had a maximum impact on mortality. That's what came out of this study. Very good study. So basically from this study, very summarily what I what we can deduce is that four into four into driving pressure plus P these two variables as a component had a major impact on the mortality and that came out from this study. And if we have to look at the power, it was the elastic dynamic component which had the second maximum effect followed by the mechanical power. So this is what came out from this. Just to remind you again of the elastic dynamic, this is a simplistic formula. 0 0.098 into tidal volume into respiratory rate into half of driving pressure. So driving pressure is coming in everything. So which means, again, driving pressure appears to be most important and add it with respiratory rate. So four times the driving uh, pressure is what has a maximum impact on the uh, power, mechanical power. So now we'll move very slowly to how do we how do we optimize mechanical power? If mechanical power is high, use this formula. And because we had, as I'm giving this talk, I have a patient on ARDS who is prone position. We did a mechanical power, it was 24. Obviously, we have to incorporate strategies because this patient right now who is prone has a driving pressure of around 14 this morning and has a P-plat of around 28, 26, but mechanical power is 24. So we are obviously putting in, we need to understand the strategies as to how we reduce the mechanical power. So how do we optimize power? So there are two broad categories. So the first category is obviously we have to reduce the production of CO2. So this is where it is important because we said permissive hypercapnia was a friendly concept we were comfortable with, but no longer can we be comfortable because if carbon dioxide is going high, mechanical power keeps increasing. And second component is enhancing ventilatory efficiency. How do we reduce carbon dioxide? It's all the archaic, uh, intuitive sort of a practices that we have been doing. So we have to optimize sedation, optimize analgesia, 
paralyzed. The patient we have in question in our ICU right now, we have obviously she is on paralysis and temperature control, reduce the sympathetic activity, so on and so forth. And how do we enhance mechanical ventilation? There is a one strategy that they've come out with this. So giving an end inspiratory pause, if that is prolonged, it has some ability in reducing dead space, prone position, which we do, and PEEP optimization. So all these are something which we have been doing, but end inspiratory pause, which can be prolonged for some time, has shown to have some effect on reducing dead space. But for us, the easiest one, the another important aspect that came out in optimizing power was adaptive support ventilation. So I think that is something which we should, so adaptive support ventilation is shown to have favorable effect on reducing the mechanical power. Is there clinical study? I'll take you through that. So what is adaptive support? So adaptive support ventilation, so I use G, G ventilators and dragger, uh, but my ventilators do not at this point of time have adaptive support ventilation. Hamilton and dragger Evita have. So adaptive support is where breathing optimization happens commensurating to the respiratory system mechanics. So when there is low compliance, typically in ARDS, there is low compliance. So the compensatory mechanism to uh, so to reduce the work of breathing is rapid shallow breathing. So they do rapid shallow breathing in the low compliance. And in patients with high resistance, so your work of breathing can be reduced by slow deep breathing because you need a prolonged expiratory phase. So what adaptive support ventilation does is you fix a minute ventilation and the ventilator plots a graph to titrate tidal volume to achieve the target flow rate that you have set at an optimal level. So basically it plots the graph to optimize the tidal volume to achieve the set minute ventilation at a set flow rate. So this is happening to the patient's needs. So the parameters that we set in adaptive support ventilation is you have to put body weight and what is the minute ventilation we are intending to achieve, what is the PEEP that we need and trigger and ventilator automatically measures the compliance and resistance and here the most important is that end inspiratory pause I said, ventilator is doing. It optimizes inspiratory and expiratory ratio, avoids auto PEEP and it sets the tidal volume and respiratory rate it pl by plotting the graph to achieve the set minute ventilation. So ventilator is doing pretty much everything for you based on the patient's needs by plotting the graph. So is there a clinical evidence? Yes, there was a study that came from Germany. So this was a Bicher et al. where they had adaptive support ventilation group and control group in ARDS. And as you see, the CO2s were similar, but when they looked at mechanical power, it was significantly less in adaptive support ventilation. It was 16 joules as opposed to 18.6 joules in the conventional group. So that is where they said that adaptive support ventilation may have some beneficial effect in reducing the mechanical power in addition to all the other tools that we incorporate like heap optimization, sedation, analgesia, reducing the dead space, so on and so forth. So if all this fails, you have, put, you have done adequate analgesia, adequate sedation, you have done adequate heap optimization, reduce the dead space, done prone ventilation, all this fails, then what is the solution? Solution is ECMO. So this is adaptive support ventilation on the Hamilton ventilator. So it, as you see, there is a graph that is plotted to attain the set tidal volume at a set uh, at a set flow rate to attain the minute ventilation. So if all this has failed, then ECMO. So what I'm increasingly understanding is, so with all these parameters, if you are failing, then there is a clear indicator that we need to look at alternate strategy, which is ECMO, because if CO2 is RSI, so if you have to incorporate our Eolia criteria, where CO2 more than 60 and pH less than 7.29 for six hours, you have to consider ECMO. So, and this is emphasized. If you, we cannot, gone are the days we can tolerate higher CO2 now, where permissive hypercapnia, even 80, we cannot accept now. It has to be less than 60 because it increases mechanical power. So, has there been any studies looking at ECMO and its effect on? Mechanical power, yes, there are studies. So if there is increasing mechanical power, despite all these strategies, then obviously you have to consider ECMO. So there is this study where they have shown that in two groups where they took patients with higher mechanical power, like our patient right now is on 23, which we are contemplating on putting on ECMO. So if higher mechanical power patients invariably went to ECMO. And patients with lower mechanical ventilator did not need it. It was shown in one of the retrospective study. 
and post ECMO, because you are resting the lung, you can see the mechanical power significantly comes down to 6.6 .6 joules per minute as compared to no ECMO, 26.1. So, which means to say ECMO rests the lungs and mechanical power will significantly come down. So that's about mechanical power. So the summary is, so we have moved a long way since 1974 when I was born to 2013, uh, 2023, where we have come with tidal volume, P plat and uh, driving pressure. Now we are talking about including mechanical power where we are adding all the sort of variables. We are putting them into a mixer along with respiratory rate, which was underemphasized in all these previous sort of a novel approaches and showing how this mechanical power has an influence on ventilator-induced lung injury. And this has a direct bearing on mortality, which we have seen in the clinical studies. So the power calculation for all my trainees, simplistically, you can remember there are three components. So there is a elastic static component and elastic dynamic component, and there is a resistive component. You have to only remember three variables in this 0 0.098 into tidal volume into respiratory rate. The last variable you have to change into P, into half of the driving pressure into P peak, P peak minus P plan. So if you remember this much as a conceptual understanding, it's not only a conceptual understanding, it has a practical bearing. So from now on, we have to look at mechanical power in all our ARDS patients. And if mechanical power, is, you are maintaining more than 17 and you're not able to bring it down, and that may be a clear indicator, despite patient having driving pressure, less than 15, despite having P plat less than 28, possibly their outcomes may be bad. And you may have to consider alternative strategies like adaptive support ventilation or maybe ECMO. So the threshold for patients going on ECMO are slowly coming down. I think increasingly, possibly we're entering an era, we may be embracing more of ECMO as a strategy uh, because of the signals that are coming out from these sort of uh, studies indicating how important is mechanical vapor. So thank you very much. And uh, summary, there is a good evidence. And these are the very flow chart of how we optimize and so on and so forth. So thank you one and all. So I request you all to submit your valuable work to a journal, which comes out every three months. So you can visit my website, www.drpradeepangapa.com to rehear to this lecture. So thank you. Thank you one and all.